Welcome back. Okay, part two. How long will it take to double your money? Well, I covered the answer to that question as a very quick estimate in the previous video. So now, let's explain what's going on. I'd like to disclaim though, I am not a mathematician by nature, uh, by training I should say. I am a rocket scientist though, so hopefully this information is reliable enough to the most seasoned veterans. Just to review, uh, to find out how much time it takes to double your money if you know the rate of return, and we're talking compound interest, you take 72 and divide by the rate. Let's practice this one time with a 12% rate of return, just to remind you what we did in the last video. If you have a 12% rate of return, you take 72 and divide by 12 to get 6 years. The answer exactly is closer to 6.12 years. So let's talk about those questions that I brought up at the end of the previous video. First, for what rates of return is this estimate good? And second, why use the number 72? So let's go with that first question and see what rates of return would provide a good estimate. For this, I'd like to uh, first declare that the rate of return will be R. Now R is in percent, so when I say R is 10, for example, I mean 10%. Let N be the number of years that it takes to double the money. Exactly. So if you work it out based on the compound interest formulas, you get this equation here. Now I'm not going to get into the actual basics of compound interest. If you do need something with that, please post in the comments and I'd gladly post a video about that in the future. The exact time in years to double your money when compounded annually is the following equation. Note here that R is divided by 100 because R is the interest rate as a percent. According to the rule of 72, this equation becomes approximately 72 over R. So what I want to do is compute the error between the exact amount of time and the approximate amount of time. So I reminded you to look at percent error prior to this video. Here's the percent error formula as per any uh, reference that you'd probably see. We take the approximate amount minus the exact amount and divide by the exact as a reference. This allows for positive and negative errors relative to the exact amount and you multiply by 100%. The 100% is implied because it's one anyway. We can rewrite this formula as such and substitute the approximate and the exact time required uh, based on the estimate of the rule of 72. There it is. So the numerator is the rule of 72, the amount of time, and the denominator is the amount of time exactly, but now we've actually simplified it to get to the following equation. Now this equation is looking a little bit gross, but you could work with it. So let's plot it and just see what's going on. You can see here that the percent error uh, based on the rate of return, it's around between positive 4 and negative 4% from a rate of return of just above 0 to about 17. Let's uh, tighten up the bounds here a bit and let's say that we're a little bit more strict. Maybe I say for example, I, I would consider an estimate to be reliable around plus or minus 3% or within that domain. You can see that a rate of return between 1.7% and 14.5% would give you a reliable estimate to plus or minus 3%. And if you want to know the rate of return of 7.847 approximately percent gives you uh, an exact estimate with the rule of 72. We can tighten up further. Perhaps you want within 1% what rate of return is accurate. Here you go. So between a rate of return of 5.7 and 10.0% approximately, the percent error for your estimated doubling time is between plus and minus 1%. Pretty good. So that answers the uh, first question, or at least addresses it to some detail. What rates of return would make the estimate good? What about this number 72 now? Let's talk about that. So instead of talking about the rule of 72, why don't we instead create a rule of k, where k, for example, could be 72 or any other nice number that you like, so that you can tune it to whatever rates of return you are considering in your uh, application. So again, remember, we have the exact amount of time to double and the amount of time based on our rule of not 72 this time, but rule of k. So 
we can actually just set those equal to each other and then solve for k. So let's do that here. Whoa, okay. I wrote a Taylor series here. Here we go. So when you look back at this equation, this logarithm here is a log of 1 plus a quantity r over 100. Now you could work with this and solve for k like that. But I think it would be nice to just apply a Taylor expansion to approximate this since we are dealing with estimates and it doesn't really hurt the estimate even further as long as you're within the uh, reasonable zone of convergence uh, for error, I should say, for the Taylor series. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace this uh, logarithm on the denominator by a two term Taylor series expansion that is up to the quadratic term of the logarithm. So let's see that. We'll take that denominator there, see that the uh, r over 100 highlighted in blue, and that corresponds to the Taylor series expansion of ln of 1 plus x. So there is the approximation, and you can see now we have put an approximate equal sign, and we're gonna see what the value of k is. Of course, you wanna make it as a function of r, the rate of return. So what I'm gonna do now is a little bit of gymnastics, uh, but I'll spare you that. First, I'll multiply by r and just jump right to the answer. So again, this is not a one and done. This is a lot of algebraic uh, work on the side. But I am confident that if you have basic knowledge of logarithms, you can go from the previous step here by getting some common denominators and canceling out common denominators eventually to this. What you see here is a nice uh, functional form. It's actually a reciprocal type function. It's uh, of the family, for example, one over one minus x, if you like. And uh, we can talk about uh, how that Taylor series expansion, again, is optional, but it does give you that flavor of what this function looks like, almost like an inverse type proportionality, but with uh, a translation as well. So, Based on this information, you can tailor the k value to whatever preferred rate of return you like. So for example, 72, as I showed you earlier, is pretty close to a very accurate answer for 8%. So why choose 72 ultimately? It's good because 72 has lots of divisors, and that's why people use it in practice.